Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back in time to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. We're children again. Well, we are a child again now. There's no way of saying that phrase, which doesn't make it sound somewhat weird. Anyway, yes, we've got a couple of things to do in Death Mountain as a child before going back there as an adult. So let's head up to Death Mountain Trail, just outside Dodongo's cabin. So here we have a soft soil location. I believe I've already got the bug out of it, but we can plant a bean in it, which will become useful very shortly. Um, because you'll see there is... Uh, there we go, a heart piece up there. Finally, let's play the Bolero of Fire that we learned last time and warp to the crater. So, our fancy heat-resistant Goron tunic is adult size. We can't wear it as a kid, which means we have a limited amount of time here. But we have 1 minute 38, because the time is proportional to how many heart containers you have, and we have quite a few, so it's more than enough time to... Plant our bean there, and finally, because this is a new soft soil location as well, we can drop a bug on it from our bottle. There's always an annoying delay on this, isn't there? Come on. There we go, and we'll get a gold skull to look for our efforts. That's us actually done as a kid, so let's head back to... Well, back to the Temple of Time, and we'll turn back into an adult and come back to Dodongo's cavern outside. So, back here, of course, the bean is fully grown, which allows us to ride up and grab this heart piece. That bean actually goes considerably further than this though, so if we wait for it to come back... Oh bugger! Oh bloody rock landed on my head! Either way, well, that was ridiculous, but either way, the bean is back. Which means we can actually use it as a little shortcut up to Goron City, it's handy there. And it actually flies all the way up to here, which is kind of towards Death Mountain Trail. Handy if you need to do anything around here that isn't directly in the crater, but obviously if we want to go straight to the crater, then we can just walk with the Bolero of Fire, or not. I can never do the L and R fast enough there. I mean, I could just play it at normal speed like that, but I really get, I get frustrated by that, I always want to do it at super speed. Anyway, back at the crater, we have obviously another beam plant here, and it goes up to this little spout to the left here, this kind of volcano-y thing. Hop on top of that, and ooh, bloody hell, into the fire, and grab a second heart piece. Beans almost always lead to something useful as an adult, so they're usually worth planting. There were apparently rocks in front of this um, when we were a kid, which prevent you getting through, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, here is the fire temple down this incredibly large pit. Oh my god, I probably should have climbed, shouldn't I? Ooh. Let's go in and see what awaits us. So, first off, one of the things that awaits us is... Fire keys make a shitey return in this particular dungeon. Uh, where are you? Hookshot's a nice way of taking him out that doesn't require any ammunition. Actually, I'm going to swap around my items briefly just to put um, the duty duty point and duty on X. Uh, that door is locked, which means the only way we can go through here is only way we can go is through here. There we go. And time for a familiar face. Who's there? Is that you, Doctor? Oh, it really is the Doctor. You've grown so big since last I saw you. I want to have a man-to-man -man talk with you, but now's not the time. Ganondorf is causing trouble on Death Mountain again. He has revived the evil ancient dragon, Volvagia. <laughs> on top of that, he's going to feed my people to that evil dragon as a warning to the other races that might resist him. If that fire-breathing dragon escapes from the mountain, all of Hyrule will become a burning wasteland. I will go on ahead to try and seal up the evil dragon. I'm concerned, though, because I don't have the legendary hammer but I have no choice. Doctor, I'm asking you to do this as my sworn brother. While I'm trying to deal with the dragon, please save my people. The prisoner's cells are in the opposite direction. I'm counting on you, Doctor. So, dead ahead there is actually the boss key door, kind of how you actually get through to the boss. Quite how Daronia is able to get through it without the boss key is unknown and irritating. But, if you look to the left here, there is a cage with a Goron in it. If you talk to him, he says, Please, don't eat me. If you could eat something like me, you'll get a stomachache. You'll be sorry. Poor thing. Anyway, we can let him out with the switch. Don't know why Darren hadn't done this, but hey. Are you releasing me? Am I free to go? 
I'll tell you a secret for saving me. In order to get to the room where Darunia went, you have to do something about the pillar stuck in the ceiling. Find a path that leads to the room above the ceiling right away. So what he's saying there is actually that's kind of an overarching goal. By the way, little chest in here which has a key. Weirdly not a key to the cell. It's strange for a cell to have a chest in it that has a key that's not for the cell that's in it. I've confused myself, but yes, our long-term goal is that pillar stuck in the ceiling, which basically we need to provide a platform to actually get over to where the boss key door is. Obviously before then we need the boss key and various other things to do. But our kind of our... our, our I don't even know what word I'm trying to say. Sub-objective, I suppose. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Is going to be to free as many Gorons as possible. So, if we go through here... We end up in this huge lava room, which looks really cool. We can go straight ahead, but as you may be able to see from here, the door is locked. It's a kind of small key lock on it. There's a door to the left and a door to the right, and both are handy to go through before going over to that small key one. I mean, we can't even get through to it. Worth knowing as well, when you're wearing the Goron tunic, you take very little damage from lava. Like, you can walk around it pretty happily, and there we just took a quarter of a heart. You take a quarter of a heart every couple of seconds, so lava is a pretty minimal threat. There's a time block up there, but I'm not going to deal with it for now. If we head through here, we got this kind of little path, which once again leads to a cell with a Goron on it. This is going to be a kind of recurring theme this episode. And they all say the same thing, you release me, we're free to go, here's a secret for saving me. The secrets are different and worthwhile though. A wall that you can destroy with the Goron's special crop will sound different when you than a regular wall when you hit it with your sword. You should remember what the Goron's special crop is, and it should be obvious even if you don't remember. But the, t the hint he gave us there is quite useful, and we're actually about to use it. That's also a regular theme, that their cells contain keys. So generally, freeing a Goron will earn you a small key. It's kind of a shame that it would be weird if the Goron gave you a key, because it's like, here's a key for someone else's cell that they could trade between them. Anyway, now we need to bring that time block down. So with that down, we can climb up and into a secret room. I mean, it's not that secret, but... So we get two new enemies here. The first enemy, I'm not even sure if it has a name. This is... No, we can't even navigate it. They're just... This room's possessed! And tiles from the room will fly out and try and hit you. Just sit here with your shield and your command. I think I can actually... Yeah, you can hit them. Um, deflect them. Hit them with the hook trap, various things. Over here is a very potentially irritating enemy. This is a like-like, an enemy that eats shields and certain clothes. Beat it quick to get your gear back. So yes, if you get near it, it'll try and like suck you in like that. And it can take any... Any shields from you. And any... Because they're... T oh, bugger! Oh, shit. It's going to bloody do me in, isn't it? Yep, my shield is gone and the tunic is wearing has been taken. So, as Navi said, kill it quickly at that point. I think... There we go. Let's go. grab all this back. I don't know how well you survive in this dungeon without the Goron tunic. Um, I think it might even just be Death Mountain itself that's dangerous without the tunic. You don't technically need it in here. But yes, ideally... Firstly, Gold Skull Teller. Ideally, you want to get rid of... Like, like, as soon as you see them, um, from a kind of safe distance, but if they also swallow your stuff, yeah, once I'm in a fiery room like this, you have got limited time. Um, so let's equip all of that back on. You'll notice as well, I've got my giant's knife there, which I'm not using at the moment. I will explain that kind of going forward. I'm, I'm basically saving it for certain circumstances. It comes with limitations, does the giant's knife. It's not, it's, it's powerful, but basically it's fragile, and if you use it, if you hit solid objects with it, or, or use it just too many times, it does break. So I'm saving it for some of the more powerful stuff in this dungeon rather than using it on, on keys. Um, so if we come over here now, let's, let's, yeah, walking through the fire is absolutely no problem because, because Gor I assume that's a property of the Goron tunic. I don't want to try otherwise I have a feeling that might be very dangerous. Anyway, remember the hint that last Goron gave us about the special crop making a weird noise when walls could be destroyed by it. Here's a normal wall noise and here is this. Now it makes a kind of bling noise, which means drop the Goron's special crop there. Yeah, hitting the walls like that, for example, with the giant's knife would very much break it. So, since it's fragile, I don't want to use it too much. Through here is, unsurprisingly, another Goron to free. And this one's secret is there are switches in this temple you'll have to strike to activate this. But you can also use the Goron's special crop to do the job. 
basically, you can kind of almost follow the trail of clues they give you. The first one will, if you kind of... Uh, key again. So the last one told us that we can spe we can detect walls that can be bombed through. And then we bombed through this one, and he gave us another hint. And they kind of give you a train of hints which guide you in the right direction. If you are doing the hint you received from the last Goron, you're probably going in the right direction. This dungeon kind of has a small key thing, but not as bad as the Forest Temple. Like you do, like here for example, we're only using one here, but we've got a second one. And it's handy to kind of get both. Basically, before going through a locked door, try and explore everywhere you can. Now, this is a slightly strange room. Um, the first thing we need to do is climb up here, but we can avoid climbing up most of it by grappling. Most of the time, there's this grating throughout the dungeon. Most of the time, weirdly, you can't grapple onto it, but you can grapple onto it here. Um, if we come over here now, there's some keys that you're sleeping, which is a perfect chance to catch them unawares. And I think there's another two over there. Let's kill them before they become an irritant. And you'll notice the main feature of the room is that giant fire geezer in the middle. So, let's... We need to go upwards, so the best way of doing that is to push this block into the geezer. And create ourselves a nice fiery elevator. Kablamo! That actually timed surprisingly well. I thought I was just going to shout Kablamo like an idiot. I mean, I did, but... This one also locked. Obviously, if you haven't got the second key, you'd have to go straight back down at this point, which would be irritating. So, there's a Goron ahead here, but the switch to release him is actually on the opposite side, so we can't do it right away. They all say the same thing about don't eat me if you talk to them through the cage door, so... Here's a strange new enemy. This is a torch slug. When the fire on its back is extinguished, it will run away. Destroy it before it relights. So, basically, I hit it once, its fire will go out, and it will try and run away. At that point, do it in properly. They're a very harmless enemy. It's actually quite hard to be damaged by them once their fire's out. And just basically, if you hit them once, you're fine. Um, ah, so, this is a little switch. If you hit it, there's some fire in the top of the room which has now gone away. But, as you can probably tell from the sound, a timer has started. We're not going to get up there in time, because I haven't sorted this out. I just wanted to show what that does. If we bring this block down here, generally, it will lock in place somewhere. Um, like, there, for example, it's, oh, it's actually not locked in place, but it's just... Generally, if, you can, if you're moving a block, move it as far as it can go. It's usually going to be helpful. If we climb up here... So that is where that fire was. You'll have to take my word for it. If we hit that switch and try and climb around, there's no way you can climb up there in time. But, if you remember the last Goron's clue, he said... We can use the Goron's special crop to hit the switches for us. And that allows you to head up here with ample time. Ah, oh, now we go into a slightly strange room um, of, of weirdly polite boulders. <laughs> You'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, if you come through here. So this is the boulder maze. Um, it's got boulders rolling around it, and they kind of they change directions, and sometimes they stop for each other and stuff like that. It's, it's really weird. Um, anyway, what we want to do is basically follow out this outer wall to the left, and I'm going to gather some stuff around here while talking. So I'm going to talk about the fire temple so the fire temple's got a cool design like i like the look of it but it's, it just doesn't have quite as good of a feel i don't think as the forest temple i like how it kind of does it oh by the way secret for saying this guy in this temple there are doors that fall down on you when you try and open them when one of these doors starts to, doors starts to fall move if you use a sample of the goron special crop you can break it um so yeah i just i think it's it's cool design and i like the fact that it's, you have the kind of sub goal of of saving all the Gorons from captivity, which is kind of cool. But the music. The music is not very good. It's just a bit of ambient noise with some weird vocals in it. And it saddens me, because there was another version of this, um, of this music, that was... So in this little area here, if we use our sword, you can hear there is a fake wall there, which once again, Goron special crop through. But yes, there was... a. This brings me on to the subject of the non-controversy about this dungeon. Um, I say non-controversy because it's often cited as being a controversy, but nothing actually happened. So, basically, have I come to the right place? Yes, I have. Um, the, well, the, the entirety of Ocarina of Time, originally when it was released as a whole, contained some, for want of another phrase, weirdly Islamic stuff. Um, the symbol... 
Oh, by the way, this guy's secret is when you're on fighting, put it up by swinging your sword, sword or rolling forward. Less useful, but hey, handy to know. Um, you can take a load of Islamic stuff in it. Not a load, but a lot. There's like there's a symbol we technically saw in a block earlier. That's the kind of this that you see throughout the game. That symbol, like it said on the switch there, that symbol. That symbol in many places was originally like basically a crescent moon and a star, which is a symbol on the flags of a lot of Middle Eastern countries. But this music was the main one. The vocals were sampled directly from a Muslim chant. And then they were removed in even subsequent versions of Ocarina of Time on the N64, like a few ye a year or so after it came out, like the versions released later on had those things like fixed. And it's often said, oh, by the way, Walk real carefully here. If you fall off, you will be back down in that big lava room underneath, and that's quite an annoying back cut. So when you're at the middle here, what you want to do is shoot the eyeball. To open that. You, as I say, you could do this dungeon before having done the forest temple, but then you wouldn't be able to go through here. You don't need to go through here, because all it contains is the dungeon map, but it's handy to have. But yes, that's often led to people saying, oh, there was a controversy about Nintendo using Muslim content, and it was removed. It was removed, but there was never any controversy, and I think that's kind of important to stress, that basically, Muslims didn't complain that this content was in the game, neither did non-Muslims complain there's too much Muslim content in the game, neither of them happened. Ninten no one even really noticed it, Nintendo just removed it, because... Some people in Nintendo, I think, higher up, weren't necessarily aware that it was in there, and Nintendo apparently has a very strict no real world things policy and incorporating like real life chants and symbols and stuff like that was too much for them so they removed it themselves so it's an interesting story but it annoys me when people refer to it as a controversy because it isn't because no one cared really other than nintendo themselves so fiery wall of death starts moving behind us here so just keep moving and you'll be okay he says failing to keep moving in the correct direction this is a very strangely built room who designed this just random grating hovering above lava. Um, but yes, um, the original Fire Temple music I think is much better than this one, uh, and I will play it in a little bit. I'm just in the middle of talking at the moment here. Um, so, here we're on top of the Boulder Maze room, and Navi wants to talk to us here. Doctor, I hear Goron voices down below. Indeed, this bit of flooring here, you can see, looks a little bit on the old fragile side. So, if we drop a bomb on it... Indeed, a way down opens up. And this makes actually a handy shortcut for later, because, hey, do you remember that Goron who was in a cage, but the switch was on the other side of the cage? There we are. So, if you need to get back down or back up at all, that's a handier way than climbing all the way around the top thing. Um, and it goes straight to the upper layer of the boulder room rather than the lower level. His secret is somewhere in this temple you're sure to meet up with creatures that dance as they attack. Arrows won't hurt them. Looks like you may need some other Goron special crop. That's all I have to tell you. That's useful, but won't come in until next episode, really. But yes, while I'm climbing back up, I will play the music from the original Fire Temple. But yeah, you see what I mean? I think I think it's creepier than this version in a kind of in a good way. Um, if we talk to this guy once again, his secret is if you find a place that you can see on your map but can't reach, try playing your ocarina. Uh, did he just walk off the end? <laughs> he did. <laughs> oh well, not our problem. Once again, there's another key here. We, you should always basically have a surplus of keys in this one. I mean, there are only as many keys as there are locked doors, but grabbing keys whenever you can basically avoids the need for backtracking. Another thing that's kind of a theme in this dungeon is Link can jump both... Oh, bugger! <sighs> Shit, bags. What I was going to say is Link can b jump both further and higher than you might actually expect, um, and often you can cross gaps. It doesn't look like you can. Anyway, I'm going to have to get back around to that point. So fortunately, we did actually want to come back to this point here, because if you stand 
here. Nope, wait, come on. Navi disappears up there. And what did that Goron just sell us? If you see a platform up there that you can't reach, try playing your ocarina. But what to play? Really? Nothing? There we go, I guess it just had to be a little bit closer than that. I thought as long as Navi was off there, it was fine. Anyway, yes, Pierre the Scarecrow appears. So this is why I wanted to activate the Scarecrow song before coming here, because this takes you to the secret elevator. And so this entire room is only accessible through the Scarecrow song. There is one point where the Scarecrow appears in the Forest Temple, but you can just grapple over there anyway, because there's a grapple point. You don't need it for anything. And I actually forgot to do that bit, shit. Fuck. Well, okay, so the, <laughs> there's a... I need to go back to the Forest Temple at some point, because there's a bloody Skull Toddler in there that I forgot. Balls. Oh well. Um, but this one, this secret area, has a useful reward, as well as two Skull Tullers, which is quite something. Um, so very much useful to grab while we are here. So you can hear another one coming to the left here. Uh, and indeed we just need to kind of... Well, firstly, don't fall down there, because that's... That's a back cut down to that narrow room, which is a further back cut. Much like Dodongo's Cavern, this is a really cool 3D dungeon, and they do use the third dimension very well. But it means there's some potential, some serious twat making of yourself. Anyway, there's a final thing here. If we hit this switch... Then the ring of fire surrounding that chest disappears, and a timer starts. To get up here, this bit of floor here is too steep to walk up, so you do have to grapple up to that thing. And once you've done that, generally the time's not really a problem with this one. Um, there you go, grab that. And you get 200 rupees, which is pretty bloody useful. Anyway, well, you know, to introduce, if you look at the map, you'll see we're at the peak of, basically, this, this whole thing is built into kind of two craters. The right crater is where we are at the moment, the left crater is where we're going to be going next episode, because that's where the dungeon item is located. So we've made our way into the fire temple, and next episode we will be exploring it further and trying to get to the legendary hammer. Thank you very much, and good day.